Greetings one and all. Today we're going to look at how to solve linear simultaneous equations. This would work for both DC with scalar values and AC with vector values. So whether you're using nodal analysis or mesh analysis, you're going to come up with a set of linear simultaneous equations that will describe either um, node voltages or mesh currents. In the case of um, nodal analysis, you're going to wind up with something that uh, you know kind of looks like this. Like you're going to have some current, I'll just call it I sub m, that is going to equal uh, 1 over some resistance, I'll call that Rx, times some uh, voltage, node voltage VA. You have a series of these, right? So you'll have one over R Y times V B, one over R Z times V C, and so on and so forth. Okay, if it was a um, nodal analysis, excuse me, a, a mesh analysis that you were doing, then we would wind up with something like this. Like we would have a, a voltage V A is equal to uh, some value R X times I one. Right, plus some resistance R Y times I two, and so on and so forth. Right, I Z and I three, for however many you have. Basically, it's just Ohm's law. Right, V is equal to I times R. I is equal to V over R. That's really all we're doing. So we come up with a set of these. Now the question is, how do we solve them? So I'm going to look at basically two approaches. One is Gauss-Jordan elimination. Uh, this is sort of a manual process. Uh, secondly, how would you attack this um, with a calculator, okay, that can do simultaneous equations? All right, so let's start with a set of equations. First of all, we would derive something like this. Let's say um, we have like 15 equals 40 times VA minus 10 times VB minus 24 times VC, right? So this would maybe something for a, uh, like a nodal analysis where you had small fractional um, resistance values, okay? Second equation, we'll just say this is five is minus 10 VA plus 30 VB minus 12 VC. And then our third equation 20 equals a negative 24 VA minus 12 VB plus 48 VC. All right, so how do I solve this set? So this one technique is Gauss-Jordan elimination. The idea is to get rid of one of the three unknowns, VA, VB, or VC, and do this repeatedly so that we eventually come down to one equation with one unknown. Once I have that, and I can solve for that unknown, I can take that unknown, put that into another equation, and sort of repeat this process, and eventually we'll wind up with everything. Okay? So the technique I like to use goes something like this. We look at these two equations, top two equations, and I'm just going to take VC. doesn't matter which one, but I like to work from the end. So. I look at VC, look at their coefficients. I've got minus 24 over minus 12. All right, so that equals 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this middle equation by the factor of 2. My point here is that I want to get the coefficient for this VC in the second equation to be the same as it is in the first equation. So when I subtract this equation from the first equation, the VC term is going to disappear. All right. So I basically go through and I multiply everything in the second equation by 2. So my second equation now becomes 10 equals a minus 20 VA plus 60 VB minus 24 VC. All right? Now I'm going to take that equation. I'm going to subtract that from my first equation. So I'll just repeat this over here. So here's 15, 40 VA minus 10 VB 
minus 24 VC, and the equation I just came up with, which is really just a scaled version of the second equation, minus 20 VA plus 60 VB minus 24 VC. And now I'm just going to subtract the one equation from the other. Okay? All right, so I'm um, just going straight through. 15 minus 10, we get 5. We get um, 60 VA here, minus and minus, right? Subtract the 60, so I got a 70 VB there. And if I subtract the negative 24 from negative 24, that disappears. So now I just have an equation with two unknowns in it. All right, now I'm going to repeat the process with equations 2 and 3, all right? Look at those two coefficients. I've got minus 12 over 48. All right, so that's one quarter negative, right? And what I'm going to do is multiply that uh, second equation, this guy right here, just like I did with this one, um, the second equation in this pair uh, by minus 0.25, so that this plus 48 turns into a minus 12, and I'll be able to get rid of the uh, VC term. All right, so I multiply everything in this third equation by uh, minus 0.25. And when we do that, all right, this will turn into, so just take a quarter of this and negate it. All right, that's going to be minus 5, I get 6VA for that, 3VB, and then a negative 12VC. All right. Okay. Now, same thing I did over here. I'm going to uh, repeat this. Okay. So let's take the um, first equation that I have of this pair, which is this guy, the five equals minus ten and so forth. And my minus twelve VC. Now the equation I just came up with. Bring that over here. Okay. Take these two things, subtract them. Okay, so I subtract negative 5 from 5, that gets me 10, and off we go. Once again, these VC terms disappear. So I now have two equations with two unknowns. I'm going to repeat the process. So I look at these two equations and I say, all right, what's the coefficient to get rid of the VBs? Well, that's going to be minus 70 over 27. And uh, that's going to work out to approximately 2.593 negative 2.593. Don't want to forget my minus sign in there. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to take this value and I'm going to multiply this equation by this. All right, so what is that going to get me? When I multiply this bottom equation by 2.593, we are going to wind up with a um, negative 25.93 equals 41.49 VA minus a 70 of VB. Now I take this equation, subtract it from this equation, the VB terms disappear, and all, I le all I'm left with is just a VA, right? So that's actually going to work out to like 30.93, you can check this, equals 18.5. 1 VA when I do that. Well, one equation, one unknown. I just solve this for VA. Now that I have the VA, I take that, put it back in one of these two equations, in which case I'll be able to solve for the VB. Now I have the VA and the VB. I can take those two, put them back in one of these three equations, and solve for the VC, and I'll have everything. All right, so that will complete the whole process. Now, if it, this is an AC circuit that you're doing, the only difference is going to be the fact that these coefficients, instead of being scalar values, are going to be um, vector values. Now that does make the, the process, for example, finding these coefficients 
a little clunkier, but it is still the same thing, right? Um, it's not a difficult process. It is perhaps a little tedious, okay? So you can save yourself a ton of time if you just spend a couple of bucks, go out and get yourself a calculator that will do simultaneous equation solutions on its own. Now, you can spend a lot of money on a calculator, and I'm not suggesting you do that. If you look around, you can find perfectly capable um, uh, calculators that are solve uh, linear simultaneous equations um, with complex coefficients, so this will work for AC as well as DC, used relatively inexpensive. You know, new, something like a TI-89 or an Inspire, you're going to be looking at maybe $150 or something like that. And then in that neighborhood, but you have options. Okay, so here's a, a TI-85. So this calculator has been kicking around since 1995, basically. All right, it does all of what you need here. TI-86 is similar. It's sort of an upgrade of this. It's a little bit nicer. Um, you can get these on the used market relatively inexpensively. As a matter of fact, I had um, uh, one student who picked. Up, uh, I believe it was a TI-85 at a garage sale for five dollars. It was perfectly functional. Nothing wrong with it. The trick here is you're going to save a lot of time with the calculator. So, what does that mean? Well, it means you can um, spend your time reading material and understanding the material, the electrical part of the material, rather than grinding through. You know, let's let's be honest here. Just multiply after multiply after multiply, subtraction after subtraction. This is not difficult math, but it definitely is tedious. And there's always the issue of, you know, forgetting a sign somewhere, accidentally turning a minus sign into a plus sign or vice versa, doing something goofy like that. So um, having a calculator that will do it for you is really good because you'll be able to very quickly crank through the uh, set of equations, get the values. Now that you have the values for things like uh, mesh currents and node voltages, you can take those, put them back in the original circuit, and see if everything works correctly. Now the process here is fairly straightforward. So uh, most calculators will do something like this. Now in the case of my little TI-85 over here, uh, what I'm going to do is simply um, go into the simultaneous equation function. So on this calculator, so the 85 and the 86 are basically the same. I hit second, hit simult. Now on an 89, you would have a little menu item, a little icon or a menu item that you would have to select to get into the simultaneous equation solution. I believe the icon sort of looks like an A and a, and a B kind of together, those two characters. All right, so this thing basically just says, hey, what's the simultaneous number? In other words, how many unknowns do I have? How many equations do I have? So, you know, I would say, oh, well, I have uh, three. And I'll type that in. Now it's going to give me a grid, and it's going to be asking for something that looks like this. We have an equation, a, sort of a format for the equation that looks like this. There is um, the constant, okay, like the 15, the 5, the 20, and so forth. For the first equation, well, we'll just call that B1 for the constant. And then we have these coefficients, right? The 40, the minus 10, the minus 24. So these in the calculator would be called A for the coefficient, first equation, first coefficient. And then we would have the minus 10 over here would be first equation, second coefficient. The minus 24 is obviously first equation, third coefficient. So you have a little menu that comes up and you just type the values in, bang, 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 bang. Okay, when you type them all in, I'll just put some stupid numbers in here. It'll then ask you for the second equation, all right? So in this case, this is this guy right here. So that's going to be B2, in other words, the constant value for the uh, second equation, all right? And then we're going to be looking at second equation, first item, second equation, second coefficient, second equation, third coefficient, all right? We put all those in. It's going to ask us for the third equation, all right? So that's a 3, 1, a 3, 2, a 3, 3. And when you put all those in, then you hit the solve button. In this calculator, it's F5. And it'll give you a set of values. It'll say, oh, x1 is so much, and x2 is so much, and x3 is so much. 
Well, X1, X2, and X3 obviously correspond to VA, VB, and VC, or if they were currents, you know, I1, I2, and I3. And you would get your values. All right. Now, the only practical thing I'll note is you probably, on the, on the 85 and the 86 anyway, um, probably the 89, you would probably want to uh, make sure that the number of digits you're using on the output is not the maximum number. Maybe set it up so that you get uh, four significant digits, let's say. Otherwise, you're going to have this long value for the magnitude and then an angle, which is going to be another long value. The thing is probably going to scroll off the end, and you're going to have to scroll over to see the entire thing. And sometimes this can bite you, because on the screen, you might see something like this. You know, you might get an answer that's, um, you know, 12.785637 dot dot dot. You can't see it, right? It's off the end of the screen. And you say, oh, well, yeah, that's, that's just, you know, 12.79 if I want to round it off to four digits. Yeah, but then if you scroll over, you find out that over here it says E minus 3. All right, so it's actually millis. Now you're off by a factor of 1,000, okay? So if you just set up the, uh, the display so that it only gives you, let's say, four or five digits, then you won't have that problem. You'll see the little E sticking in over here, and... Uh, that won't bite you, okay? So um, if you look around, like I said, you could probably find these uh, at uh, clearance prices, as it were, used. Just make sure the display is working well, um, or that you know if you buy it online, it has some kind of guarantee to go with it, um, just in case there is a problem. But you can save yourself a ton of money, and more importantly, you can save yourself a ton of time. And for all the technology we have, we've never been able to actually create time.